All right, guys, so in this example here, we're working with two forces acting at four kilonewtons for force one, six kilonewtons for force two. And we're going to look for the magnitude of these two forces, which is going to be FR for the resultant force, as well as its uh, direction, which is going to be measured clockwise from this axis here, which is going to be called uh, the positive U axis. So first, let's use the law of parallelograms or the uh, parallelogram properties to find the magnitude of these two forces. So we'll draw, we'll, super, uh, we'll transpose these two forces, F1 and F2. So we'll draw F1 looking something like this and F2 looking something like that. And then you draw your uh, resultant force, but actually I'm going to close this up first. So we'll have F1 being parallel to uh, F1 again and then F2 being parallel to F2. And then, like I said, you draw your resultant force, which would be somewhat in this direction, which makes sense. So now we're going to fill in everything that we know about this uh, parallelogram. So we know that F2 is going to be 6 kilonewtons on both sides, of course. And then F1 was 4 kilonewtons. And now do we have any angles here? So this angle between these two forces, between force F2 being the 6 and the force F1 being the 4, would be this angle here, right? Or this angle in between. We're only given the third degrees here, but we can find this out because if you see, you have your U-axis and your V-axis, and between them is 75 degrees. So therefore, on this side, this angle here should also be 75 degrees. But we're only looking for this part here. So let me actually draw it in red to make it more legible. We're looking for this area here. So if you subtract this 30 degrees here from your 75, you know that you're dealing with a 45 degree angle here. So this here is actually 45 degrees. So now we know that the angle between these two forces is actually going to be 75 degrees, 30 plus 45. So let me go ahead and fill that in on our parallelogram. So here we have 75 degrees between our two forces. And then, of course, opposite for opposite angles, the opposite also equals 75 degrees. Now, a parallelogram has uh, 360 degrees all around it. All, all angles add up to 360 degrees. So if we know that uh, we have 360 minus 75 and 75, that's 150. We have 210 degrees between this angle and this angle. We also know that they must be equal. So 210 divided by 2 means that this here is 105 degrees. And then this here is also 105 degrees. So now if you make the clever uh, observation here that you actually have two triangles in this parallelogram, you have uh, this force here, this force here, and the resultant force, that's one triangle. And then you have another force here, force going down, and the resultant force making you another triangle. We can use one of these triangles because we have two sides and an angle in each triangle. And then we can use the law of cosines to find out all of our missing information, such as our resultant force. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll transpose a triangle. So we have our six kilonewtons coming down, something like that. Our four kilonewtons going over something like that. And then lastly, our resultant force to close it all up, going something like that. Now let's label this up. So we have six kilonewtons coming down, four kilonewtons going horizontal. And of course, this isn't actually vertical and horizontal because we don't know if it's actually down the y-axis and across the x-axis. Um, but we know that this is 105 degrees between them. And we don't actually know what the angle is between the resultant force and force F2 of 6 kilonewtons because that 75 degrees is split in some sort of uh, fraction between these two uh, triangles. So we don't know what that is for now, but we do have these three pieces of information. We have side, side, and angle, which means that this actually is a side, side, angle triangle. So therefore, we can use the law of cosines which is valid when you have a side-side angle triangle. And what the law of cosine says is that, in this case, the resultant force, so we'll have this as FR, the resultant force would be equal to the square root of side 1, which we'll say is the 4 kilonewtons squared, plus side 2, which is the 6 kilonewtons squared, minus 2 times each side, so 4 and 6, and then we're going to multiply all of that by the cosine of the opposite angle, which would be this angle right over here, which is opposite of the resultant force, 105 degrees. Close up the square root, 
And now if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have that the result at force FR equals 8.026 kilonewtons. So that is your resultant force. So we know that our resultant force is somewhere in this area over here, but is it below the U-axis or is it above the U-axis? We're going to have to find that out now. So just like how we use the law of cosines to find the resultant force using its opposite angle, what we could do is we could also find this opposite angle here. We can say that this is going to be, let's call it angle alpha. And we can say that angle alpha uh, could be found out by using the law of cosines by setting four, its opposite side, of course, four being over here. That was a really sad arrow there, but we'll say four equals the other two sides. So we'll have uh, six squared plus the resultant force of 8.026 squared minus two times the product of the other two sides. So six and 8.026 times the cosine of our unknown angle alpha. Close up that square root. And now if we just use some simple algebra, we can solve for uh, our cosine or just for our, our alpha. So when you do, if you just square root or take the square of both sides, you'll have that four squared minus six squared minus 8.026 squared. Now divide all of that by negative two times six times 8.026. 26, because of course that's all being multiplied by your cosine alpha. Take the cosine inverse of both sides and you'll be left with your alpha. Plug that into your calculator and you'll have that alpha equals 28.78 degrees. Now of course that's not your direction from the positive u-axis, that's your direction between force F2 and your resultant force. So in other words, if I draw our resultant force from our datum point there, we know that we're 28 degrees away from this force F2. So if we go over, we know that the u-axis is actually 30 degrees away, so 28 is going to be the majority of that. So we'll say it's like something like right there. And the angle between these two, we'll actually use red for this, is going to be 28 0.72 degrees. Sorry, 28.78 degrees. And of course, we're tasked to find this angle here. We're looking for this between there and there, whatever that arc is. And we can find that arc by subtracting 30 degrees minus 28.78 degrees. Of course, that's going to be the difference of this 30 and this 28.78 to get you the difference there. And that should be equal to 1.22 degrees. And that's, of course, going to be your direction from the positive U-axis to your resultant force.